It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Millsy. Back at the hometown commander. Back for another episode of Millsy Brews, the show where I brew a version one Pinot deck that's of the commander in front of us on my quest to brew the magic. Well, there's always that deck list going to be down in the description for you below. So I'd really appreciate it if you get interact with the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Consider becoming a member of the channel for all my videos early as well as other perks. Check out the links in the description and let's jump on into it. Today we're talking about a meme of a card, but it's a meme I'm here for. And that's the Mind Scanner, a triple blue 10-1 enchantment creature nightmare that says it cannot be blocked. And if a source you control would deal damage to an opponent, prevent that damage, and each opponent mills that many cards. I think we've we've complained in Commander at multiple times how hard it is to mill players and make mill a legitimate strategy, and I think the Mind Skinner has a chance to make it kind of brutal and fun at the same time. The Mind Skinner is a really interesting card. It dies to your classic removal, but it turning all damage we control to an opponent into milling cards means there's a lot of ways we can do it. In all reality, I thought of two things. One, we already get to do all the mill stuff we already wanted to do. And two, if we make copies of the Mind Skinner, unfortunately, the, the milling doesn't multiply because you have to prevent the damage in order to do the milling. But I think having multiple unblockable 10 ones that, remember, mill each opponent for 10 whenever they hit could be a really easy way to get this thing done quickly. Pair this with another great mill we have in blue, and I think this is a deck that's going to have a ton of fun. I want to reiterate off the top before we get into it, because I know there's going to be comments. Multiple Mind Skinners will not double the amount that's milled. Each of them will still do their 10 damage and prevent their own damage and mill the 10. You will get multiple triggers. Of course, those triggers are just going to fall off. But again, the point is to deal more milling in the combat step by making multiple of them. So I just want to make sure we're clear on that. We aren't gaming the system. We're not, you know, free money Dogecoin to the moon. We're, we're just basically trying to get more of these triggers and these things that our opponents have to deal with. The more Mind Skinners that are around, the worse it is for our opponent. And then we're just going to protect our boy. Let Mind Skinner do its job and be scary good at it. I mean, you clicked on the ability, you clicked on the uh, game, you clicked on this one for mill. So you knew it was coming. We, we want to mill, right? Jace Memory Adept just got that great reprint, uh, the media promos. Zero target player mills 10 cards. Brewback going to double the amount of cards that are milled. Going to work really well with the Mind Skinner for that. Ruin Crab, whenever a land comes in under our control, each opponent mills three. Teresi and Mindbreaker, when it attacks, defending player mills half their library, round it up, where we can unearth that in back from our graveyard. It may be a 7 mana 6 4, but it's going to hurt once it gets going. Zelix can tap to mill a couple cards, but it also works well because it says whenever a player mills one or more creature cards, we make horror creature tokens, meaning that as Mind Skinner is doing its thing, Zelix is just going to keep getting us horrors, hopefully, for it. Cut your losses, six mana casualty to sorcery that says target mayor player mills half their library, rounded down. These kind of effects might seem to some people like they don't work well with Skinner, but remember that Whenever one Mind Skinner hits, no matter who it hits, everybody's milling 10. Which means if you're really just draining all three tanks at once, if we think our opponents like life tolls, we're just draining everybody's tanks. And it doesn't matter how quick we do it or how slow we do it, half is going to look a little bit better at the beginning of the game than it is at the later stages of the game. But hey, any cards coming out of their deck is going to help to allow us to drain those tanks and get towards winning the game. Fractured Sandy, everybody's milling 14, or when we recycle it, everybody mills 4. Madding Cacophony, that beautiful combo with Brewback. Each opponent mills eight cards, but if we kick it, each opponent mills half their library, round it up. Uh, of course, Madding Cacophony plus Brewback is immediately all of our opponents milling their entire libraries, and that's a great way to win that way. Uh, Sorcerer's Squall feels really fun on the top end. Target opponent mills nine cards, and you can cast an instant sorcery from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. That's pretty fun, just a great way to... Either mill the player you think has the best spells, or take a spell that's already been milled and cast it. We can delve it to get rid of our cards of our graveyard that makes it even cheaper. This feels like just like a fun top-end spell for that. Court of Cunning um, gives the Monarch into the game. If we're the Monarch, um, at the beginning of our upkeep, each player mills 10 cards uh, that we want. Each of the player, players of our choice mills 10 cards, but if we're not the... Um, 
Monarch, it's just two cards. It's still a great ability to chip away. Frank Sandy said the beginning of each end step, enchanted player mills X cards, where X is the number of cards put into their graveyard from anywhere this turn. This is a way to pick one player and really target them down for milling them. Memory Erosion, whenever an opponent casts a spell, they have to put the top two cards of their library into their graveyard, start chunking somebody out if we expect them to play a ton of spells. Psychic Crows, whenever we draw a card, each opponent mills two. Teferi's Tutelage, whenever we draw, target opponent mills two. So there's a way to start, again, targeting specific people if we can, you know, again, the whole goal is to drain all the tanks. So at the end of the day, we want to make sure we're getting everybody we can. And the struggle for Project Purity is an interesting one. So... You have the option to do the top one, which is the beginning of your upkeep. Each opponent draws a card, and you draw a card for each draw in this way if we're worried about drawing. But I think most of the time we want the Enclave. Whenever a player attacks you with one or more creatures, that player gets twice that many rad counters. Remember, rad counters focus uh, force them to mill on their main step. And if they mill a non-land card, they get rid of a rad counter. Otherwise, they keep it. So just a way to potentially stop them from hitting us back and becoming a risk that way. But like I said, I think the best way to take advantage of the Mind Skinner is to copy it. Yes, like I said before, I'm going to reiterate again. No, multiple Mind Skinners will not 2, 3, 4x the amount of cards that are being milled. But remember, each Mind Skinner that hits is going to mill our opponents for 10. So if you think about it, in a turn, if I can mill 20, 30, 40 cards with multiple Mind Skinners, 4 or 5 Mind Skinners, I mean, it's, it's going to be brutal that our opponents have to deal with getting it off the board before it gets even worse. The card I think feels the greatest with it is Auton Soldier. It says it comes in as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it isn't legendary, it's an artifact, and has myriad. This means that Auton Soldier will come down as a copy of the Mind Skinner, attack an opponent, and get two copies of itself attacking other opponents. You're not talking about 30 cards per combat that our opponents now have to deal with. Remember, they can't be blocked, and they're going to prevent that damage and mill. It's not going to take very long if our opponents cannot deal with Auton Soldier to deal with the game. We are playing counter spells in the deck. We are playing protection and removal as well. But I mean, at the end of the day, you can start to see why things like Sakashima's become important. It's the difference between 10 and 20 or 30 cards per turn that we're milling our opponents. I mean, you're not talking about the game lasting very long if we can stick some of these copies down. Same thing with Spark Double, Arenicus, Val Duplication. Again, just straight up copies of the Mind Skinner. They're milling. Our opponents, one of my favorite cards in this deck for the purposes of the Mind Skinner is Nanogene Conversion. It says we choose a creature we control. It says each other creature becomes a copy of that until end of turn, except it isn't legendary. Meaning if we have a board full of creatures, they now all become copies of the Mind Skinner. And I mean, you could start to do the math on how many we really need to knock a game out of proportion with just one Nanogene Conversion. Yes, it's a little bit of Christmas land. It's a little bit of um, needing it to work. But again, I think a turn three Mind Skinner into a turn four Sakashima or Spark Double is going to go a long way on a board. Bone Horde is a piece of equipment that says quick creature gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in all graveyard. Uh, remember that we don't need the Mind Skinner to deal damage, it's just anything dealing damage, meaning that this living weapon Bone Horde is going to become a threat. Cage Sun giving all of our blue creatures plus one plus one and letting our blue mana tap for additional mana is a huge ability. Turns that Mind Skinner from 10 into 11. Colossus Hammer just seems like a meme, but it feels right. Turning the Mind Skinner into a 20-11 uh, instead of a 10-1. Can't be blocked anyway. So something like Colossus Hammer just seems like it'd be a meme. Excalibur plus 10 plus 0 in Vigilance. Again, Mind Skinner can't be blocked. So it's just going to hurt being encrypted to a legendary creature for 2, and then it's going to come in where X, X less, where X is the total mana value of historic permanence we control. Fire Shrieker giving uh, Mind Skinner double strike feels really good. Um, 20 cards instead of 10, you know, every turn. Doesn't take very long. And then, well, Helm of the Host, again, make a copy of the Mind Skinner. Again, 10 more cards a turn. I think it's going to be easy to sit here and say this just seems dumb, but I mean, the difference between 20 and 30 or 20 or 30 and 40 cards a turn is astronomical. Yes, you are handing your graveyard deck opponents the, all the things they could ever ask for. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of players that are not going to be able to deal with milling 20 or 30 cards a turn. Sort of body and mind, giving um, mind scanner protection from green and blue. Whenever it deals damage to a player, create a 2-2 two -two wolf creature token and that player mills 10 cards. And then Trepanation Blade, whenever the equipped creature attacks, repeal, defending player reveals from the top of their library until they hit a villain. 
plus one plus zero for each card revealed this way. Again, so just a way to potentially get some extra damage in there on the top of what we're already doing. Okay, so how are we going to protect the Mind Skinner? Because right? at the end of the day, it's pretty obvious the Mind Skinner is the literal linchpin of our deck, and it's not going to be very hard to figure out that they need to remove it. Well, if things like Siren Storm Tamer, which can protect it, a single target spell, Lava Spur Boots, giving it Ward 1, Lightning Greaves, giving it Haste and Shroud, Swiftfoot Boots, giving it Hexproof and Haste, Thran Power Suit, giving it Ward 2, and then Whisper Silk Cloak, giving it Shroud. I mean, yes, it can't be blocked. It already has that ability, but giving it Shroud is beneficial as well. So I think you can start to understand. We're pairing, and that's why I call it a meme. We're pairing the meme of just copying the Mind Skinner with the protection and the counter spells, hopefully just to keep our board alive and just just ring our opponents out over, of course, of a game. I've said before, I'll say it again. No decks ever complete. This is my version 1.0 shot at it. I think the deck looks really solid. There's a couple things I think we could do a teeny bit better. Um, and the first is uh, Mithril Coat over there on the right. We could just make the Mind Skinner indestructible. It gets around a lot of the removal that could affect our board. Um, and would be another option for protecting our um, Mind Skinner that way. Fleet Swallower seems fun. Whenever it attacks, Tire Player mills the top half of their library, round it up. Uh, again, I think a lot of what would make the deck better is really just either more ways to copy the Mind Skinner or more ways to protect him. At the end of the day, this is a Voltron deck in the sense that the Mind Skinner is the thing we're going to rely on, and it's the thing that's going to help us win the game. So in our testing, I think we're focused on do we have enough pieces to protect it, do we have enough pieces to make it work. But let's start our first um, playtest. And when we have the combo in our hand, we've got Brewback and Mania Coffee. We have the Mind Skinner. We have Reality Shift for a little bit of removal. And Halimar Defs is always fun. The truth is we're about, what, six mana to do Cacophony. So we're about two mana away from the Brewback plus Cacophony combo. We've got Mind Skinner. I mean, at the end of the day, we're working towards what we want. We draw Wizard class to give us no maximum hand size. It becomes level two. We draw two cards. And then whenever we draw a card, we, we can put a counter on a creature. Not a bad way to start. Again, if we find some ways to draw them, now we're not worried about it. Play the island here. We'll just keep up Reality Shift. And my goal is just to play the Mind Skinner here on turn three. And then play um, and then play Brewback on turn four, right, to get the man mana that started. So turn four, we play Brewback. Hold up Pongify just in case. Attack with Mind Skinner. Everybody's now milling 20, right? They would mill 10, but because of Brewback, they're going to mill 20. Because no one can block Mind Skinner, so now on turn 4, we're milling for 20. We're going to keep Pongify up just in case we need to remove something off the board. We're going to untap for turn 5. Now, obviously, I could play the Cacophony now, but I really don't see the point. I'd rather wait for the mana uh, to do it. C-Double says that we can copy target spell. Or we can create a token that's copy of target creature. Well, we don't want to create a copy of either of these because they're legendary. Um, I don't mind the idea of taking up the, the, the wizard class here just to draw two, right? That's going to allow me to get a, get a couple extra cards to see. And now, oh, we got Eel Umbra. That certainly seems like a great thing to put on the Mind Skinner. Right? Giving it plus one, plus one, and um, totem armor. Now, again, we go in. Now people are milling 22 this turn. So we're at 42 total on turn 5. And unless someone can find a way to get through this Mind Skinner uh, plus Eel Umbra, I mean, this game is pretty darn over. Now, basically, what happens here on turn 5 is they need it to be a single target piece of removal that exiles, right? Anything that destroys is going to just hold off the Umbra. And yes, there is a world where somebody could, you know, Plowshares, Path to Exile, Mind Skinner, right? That That's just the truth of the reality. But now we are just one mana off of this Cacophony combo on Brewback. So they have to get rid of both Brewback and the Mind Skinner. Again, we don't mind Brewback dying. If it's a matter of somebody wiping the board here, I think that's A-OK. -okay. But we come to this turn. Halimar Depths, look at the top three. And it says, put them back in any order. Black Blade's fun, Erosion's fun, but I think Zelix is probably the best choice there, five mana this turn. Um, I love the idea of just Sakashima as a copy of the Mind Skinner. Swing in with the Mind Skinner here again. 22 more cards, so up to 64 on turn six. I mean, we're, we're just threatening the game um, 
game being over next turn. You know, this just goes to show you that if this deck's left alone, what it can do. I aware that it's a little Christmas landy, but the truth is, like, if this deck's left alone, it can it can do some damage. Here we go. Play test two with a Sakashima's Arcane Denial for some protection, Manning Cacophony, and that Sorcerer's Squall. Turn one, we'll play that. Turn two, we'll play the Island and those boots. Wow, look at that Arenicus for even more copying. Turn three, I think we just play the uh, Mind Skinner. Can't attach the boots yet, but that's a okay. Um, we're going to turn four, no lands. That's kind of stinky, but we'll attach the boots. We'll keep up the Arcane Denial. Hit some people for everybody. Mill 10 there. Turn five, ugh, second land. No land again, but that's, again, a little brutal, but it is what it is. Keep up the Arcane Denial. Mill somebody, mill everybody for 10. This is the stinky part where now we're running into no lands, which is okay. I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're doing okay. I guess I'll take the tr turn off the Trepidation Blade, attack in for 10 more cards. There we go. Now we got some more there. We could attach the Trepidation Blade if we want to. Uh, it only has Hexproof, right? Yeah. So we'll attach the Trepidation Blade, leave up the Denial, hit somebody for 10 plus... The Turbidation Blades, we're probably in the mid-30s, right, on cards mill now. Now again, turn fate, no lands again, which again is still brutal, but, it, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. We might as well just leave up the Arcane Denial just for some protection. We'll end up pitching a card for turn, attack again, like I said, leave up Pongify, leave up the Denial. I mean, our opponents have to stop this loop, otherwise they're just dead, right? We can kind of protect this loop and win the game. It feels kind of cheesy. And that sense, but the, the truth of the way this deck is built is the Mind Skinner is the thing we want to use. It's like a Voltron deck, right? The Mind Skinner is the thing we want to use, and our opponents have to deal with it. Otherwise, they're just going to, you know, slowly bleed out to the Mind Skinner. But let me know. What do you think of the Mind Skinner down in the cup section below? It's a really interesting deck. I'll be honest, I've never really wanted to try a mill deck, but I think this might be fun to try to table. I'd love to hear what you think of it, and I will catch you guys next time.